if you are lying down, please sit up. Because there is one thing I have noticed about Nigerians, about us. We easily adapt to negative situations. Instead of rise above it, we adapt. Instead of go beyond it, we settle. We are that nation full of people who easily forget our pains. We easily, we easily take anomaly to be normal. We easily take uncomfortable to become comfortable. We easily do that. In fact, I am tempted to say that we are a nation full of people who very easily forget our pains. We are easily always moved by what is happening next. But today, I want to let you know that that person who forgets to learn from yesterday will become a victim of tomorrow. And we can be a part of those set of people because there is a reality that is upon us. There is a reality that is upon us that we must first bring very much to our awareness and look for solutions to live beyond it. We often settle with a man go do. That's our mindset. What did man go do? What did what did man go do? That's why I see him. We the manage. Can you remember the first time we used these sentences? Twenty years ago, thirty years ago, forty years ago, and thirty years after, forty years after, ten years after, two years after, we are still using them. We the manage. What did man go do? Man no go die. All those things, and we are not rising beyond the situation. It's because we are not learning from the past. It's because we are not, we're actually living. The majority of us are not growing. We've, we've transited beyond, be, uh, uh, we've transited over the years, but we have not learned the lessons of our Nigeria that what is being sprung at us does not anyway come to us anymore as surprises. So this morning, we first need to understand the reality. And when we understand this reality, we are now going to bring out workable strategies that we are going to use to conquer these realities. Because whether we pay attention to them or not, they are happening to each and every one of us in one way or the other. If they are not happening to you, they are happening to the people around you. If you know about them and you're not letting people around you know about it, you find out that it will somehow indirectly be getting to you. So what is the Nigerian reality? That is the question. What is the reality of our nation as, as, as a set of individuals today? What is that reality? Are things going as, we, as you expect? Let's not even say we. Are things happening as you had anticipated? If someone had told you that 14th of October 2024 will be as it is. Will you have accepted it to be so? Many of us are already pointing fingers at everybody, hoping that somehow a better person would have been there as our president, as our governor, as our house of rep, and things would have happened better. Let me start off by saying this. Number one, there is no magician anywhere. Better have this at the back of your mind. 
There is no magician anywhere that will wave a wand and Nigeria of 19, 1965 or 1970 will happen. No, there is no magician anywhere. Don't even make that mistake. I have had cause to have discussions with people who are 30, 35, 27, 28, and I found out that these minds are even worse than those who we tag today as worst leaders. Yes. When you have discussions with these people and listen to what they think should be done, listen to what they anticipate should be theirs, and listen to what they think they should do to get those things that they are theirs, my brother, my sister, in fact, if you are not like them, if you are thinking, you will just give up. There are few who are result oriented, who understand what it takes to build and to, to build, especially on things that will last. But a vast majority are disheartening. A very vast majority are disheartening. The average Nigerian doesn't want to work. The average Nigerian believes in luck. The average Nigerian believes in shortcuts being the ideal way to create wealth. Yet, they want all the benefits of wealth at the slightest, at the simplest work possible. You are interviewing someone for a job and he's asking you, one is what the, the resumption time, why, why is it not nine o'clock? You're interviewing someone for a job and the person tells you the reason why he showed up for the interview by 10.30 instead of the proposed 10 o'clock is because it was raining. He has not gotten the job yet, though, but he's justifying why he has to be late for the interview because it was raining. A friend was telling me over the weekend that in fact, he met a lady who was looking for a job but says she does not want to do a marketing job. She wants to do a job where she will sit in the office and the customers will come to her. Those are the people, majority, a large chunk of our so-called future of tomorrow. That is their mindset. So when I say there is no sense, no magician anywhere, it does not mean there are no people who are better than those in leadership. But remember, that those people in leadership are also going to work with people. So if you understand this, it brings me to the first point of our discussion today, understanding the reality. Now listen to this. The worst, have you realized that in our country of today, the worst of yesterday is the best of today? Somebody didn't hear that. Pay attention again so that you hear it. Have you realized that in the Nigerian economy, the worst of yesterday always end up becoming the best of today? When Fuel was 65 Naira, some of those currently in power in a bid to, to win election, we are giving us manifestos, promises, castigating the, the, the then incumbent administration that if they go into power, they are going to make well, da 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 be. We ourselves, that we are the governed, we are complaining that the then, then administration was terrible. Da 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 da. Today, I was having a discussion two weeks ago with a serving uh, honorable member. And he said, what is going on? We are complaining that Jonathan was this, Jonathan was that, Jonathan was this, Jonathan was that. I'm going to look at us today. If we look at the state of the economy in during Jonathan's administration and today, will we say Jonathan is a saint or not? <laughs> yeah. That's the reality of our Nigerian nation. 
many of us have become spiritual that we have lost logic. We are expecting that the current price of fuel that has been pegged at 1,030 naira officially, at 1,035 naira officially, that somehow some magic will happen and it will become, it will go back to 400 naira. Please tap the person beside you. Tell the person, wake up. Just tell the person, wake up. Just wake up. Just wake up. You have to wake up to the reality. The reality is that, my brother, my sister, this may be the least it may ever be. I read an article that was talking about how they arrived at this. Currently, what they have succeeded at doing is deregulating the downstream completely. So there is no subsidy there anymore. So it means that all, all other oil marketers, as well as NMPC, can buy fuel from Dangote refinery. They can import like NMPC does. Now, what this means is that there is a chance that there will be competition. There is a chance. Except they decide to work as a caucus and decide this is what it's going to be. But just like what happened in telecommunication, there is a chance such a thing will happen in the downstream sector. We are now, okay, Che, you are in the market, I'm in the market. I can buy my own for 900 Naira. And instead of selling 1,035 Naira, I will sell my own 1,020 Naira so that I will use that small margin and have an edge. It can happen. It can break competition. But till it happens, listen to this, till it happens, the person who stays afloat is the person who anticipates the worst. Because even when the worst happens, he's not shocked. Even the best, the best that happens, it helps him to maximize profit. It's somebody listening to me. Stop looking for that nation where overnight everything will be fine. Let me tell you this. Even if, listen to this, even if the price of fuel goes down to 800, 700, 400 naira, it's the impact of these few days of up and down, 600, 700, 800 to 1,000. The impact of it on the economy is not going to leave us in the next two years. Just know that. Just know that. Just on that. See, take a look at history. Take a look at history. Apart from the prices of things that are affected by season, say, okay, this thing, tomatoes comes out best or is cheapest at dry season as against rainy season or yam comes out best at dry season as against rainy season that affects the prices. How many things in Nigeria do the prices go up and eventually go down? How many things? Let's be sincere. How many? We don't want to accept these realities of the state of the economy. We are not asking not that we accept it to become our reality. No. What I am saying is, is the reality of the economy. And, and there is this thing many of us, I see us do. We spend so much time, so much energy arguing and debating what we cannot do anything about. We spend so much time talking about cutting down a tree we don't have a, an axe for. We spend so much time pushing a car we can't put petrol inside. Many people gather today, what they are talking about is, like they said, is the new booty, new world. Spending time on irrelevances, total irrelevances. I urge you today, stop participating in that class. It's a waste of good manpower, manpower time, and valuable brain resources. Everything you say and cascade and castigate the current administration, are they aware? No. Are they aware? No. Ask yourself. Quarreling, arguing, complaining, crying, Insulting, cursing, are they aware? 
Don't you think if those people are affected by the curses people lay on them, they would have died when they, every night? But every morning you see them even stronger than us. Let's not talk about the life after. Allow God to decide that one. Don't be the judge. You are not the God that made them. But we need to understand that this is our reality. If it goes up in Nigeria, it doesn't come down. When spaghetti left 150 naira and now went to 1,095 naira, 1,100, it's not a surprise. Why is it not a surprise? Because when it was at 150, you were hoping it would go back to 70. He refused to go back to... When I was in school, spaghetti was 70 naira, 65 naira. He went to 150. Hey, times two of the price. We did not think or put plans in place to not allow these realities to affect us. What happened? He went to 200, went to 250. Does it come down? We are still hoping it will come down. It has gone to 300. We are still hoping it has gone to 1,000. Are you still hoping that it will come back to 800? Is that what you are still hoping? Is that really what you are still hoping? If that is what you are hoping, it means that the things you teach your children, you are not applying it. When a child puts his hand in fire, the child is not the one that set up the fire. But he doesn't know that this thing can hurt. He sees a flame that is so beautiful. He puts his finger on it. He cries and cries and comes to you. You take the finger, you put it in eyes, you massage it, you tell her, don't go there again. A fire is burning. And many of us are wishing that the fire we did not start will be the one to go and quench it. Whereas the source of the fire is still constantly being fueled. Rather than learning the lesson from the last one we got from previous fire we put our finger in. That is the reality of the Nigerian nation. You need to stop worrying about what you cannot control. You need to stop because you're wasting time. I have any, any gathering I come and all the people are talking about is Nigerian economy do this, Nigerian economy do that. I look at you. Number one question I ask myself, are you a, a House of Red member? No. Are you a senator? No. Are you a local government chairman? No. Are you a governor? No. Are you related to any of these people that when you tell them to do something, they do it? The answer is no. They will not participate in that discussion. It is a total waste of time. Because all we are doing, majority of us, is discussing the problem, but we are not discussing the solution. We need to understand that this is the reality. It's not about what you perceive. It is the reality. That is the state of the nation. It's affecting and happening to us all. It's not even happening to them. These are guys that drive six cars on a convoy, each with a can capacity of almost 200 liters. They put in these six cars and the filling station fills them up. They are not even aware that they have been paid for and they are cruising. And you're here talking about them, about what God will do to them, about leave God to do what he will do to them and focus on what you will do for yourself. And that brings me to the very first thing I have for us today. Number one, you see this Nigerian nation, the reality of it, it may probably get worse. Just strap up. Yes. Uh, Gam, why are you coming on a Monday to start with this message? Listen and listen good. I am not asking you to believe what I'm saying. Is it that you believe it today? Or in one year time, you will remember I held this session with you and told you it will probably get worse. Yes. It will, probably, most likely, most likely, it will. Even if there are policies already put in place, they will not take effect immediately. The impact will not be effective immediately. It will show immediately. So what do you do in the interim? You're hoping that uh, once a new administration comes, in one week, they will change everything in one year. No. When did we do the last election? How many years? Is, how many months have gone past? We are going, is it second year or third year? I don't even know anymore. Just tell yourself, this situation may probably get worse. 
It is not my reality. It's the reality of the nation. It's to call a spade a spade. If somebody had told you that fuel will become 1,035 Naira officially by October this year, if somebody had told you that by January this year, would you have believed it? The answer is maybe no. The then CBN governor in 2012 was shouting, screaming, screaming, when dollar gets to 200 Naira per dollar, when this one, now it's not 200 Naira per dollar. We are begging, let it not get to 2,000 Naira per dollar. So, judging from where he was, where he was shouting at, at, at in 2012, <laughs> is that not, is that not, is that not, is that not a, a heaven compared to what it is now? It is. It is. So telling yourself, no, I prophesy that things, see, see, you can prophesy on your own world. Prophesy on your own world. But the reality is the reality. The reality is the reality. My economy will get better. Your economy will get better. But you see, this economy, the way things have been going over the years, Learn from it and tell yourself, man, don't see these things. These things, the way they are, they don't look as if they are getting better. I am going to do something about my own economy. When you tell yourself these realities, it brings me to the second message I have for us this morning. You see, in this wave of uncertainty, in this dwindling economy, is the greatest fortune created. Hmm. You know, I was having a discussion with someone and the person said something in the line of um, if civil servants were paid well, if civil servants were paid well, uh, the, uh, the economy will be better, things like that. I didn't want to go into that discussion because I don't know the person so well yet, but let me tell you the truth and listen to this. And I don't mean any disrespect to civil servants. The economy is not made better by civil service. Go and read the history of the world. <laughs> Well, in the history, great nations are not built by civil service. Those people have been programmed to follow a line of action that they cannot go beyond. That's it. The economy, an economy is empowered by individuals who are tired of the status quo. It's not by civil service. Civil service is the crown. So I am of the opinion that they should get more, but hanging our hope on civil service is a wrong place to place our weight. A very wrong place. It is individuals. Imagine there is no Dangote in Nigeria. Think about it. No, I want you to take a moment and think about the things this man, the things that are happening in Nigeria because of this man. Imagine there is no Dangote in Nigeria. Imagine there is no Mike Atedonga in Nigeria. Imagine what MTN would have done with us. Or Nitel. Nitel, civil service. Shall we see how it went? Some of the infrastructure of these telecoms are Nitel infrastructure. But they are gone. Imagine there are no individuals like this. Yes, call them capitalists. They are capitalists. They are there to make income, to grow wealth. But also know that these people, imagine there is no glow. Imagine what MTN was doing with Nigerians before Glo came on board. MTN was charging us per minute billing. If you call for one second, they charge you. If it was, let's say, 20 naira, they charge you 20 naira. If you call for two seconds, it's still 20 naira. Glo came and dealt with their business and brought in a second billing. Imagine this individual did not rise up against all odds. Nations are built by individuals who are tired of the status quo. And it is our time to stand up 
It's one of those individuals. Am I speaking to somebody this morning? It is our time. It is our time to stop complaining and start providing solutions. Because in the midst of all these concerns, inherent in it are opportunities depending on the angle you are looking from. If you are looking from the angle of a victim, all you will find are obstacles. If you are looking from the angle of a winner, a success, somebody who creates success, all you will see are opportunities. Now is our time. Now is my time. What about you? Are you looking at the Nigerian economy? Are you looking at your economy that you can grow beyond the Nigerian economy? Now is our time. Now is my time. Are you willing to be part of these people who are saying, I don't care what is going on in the economy. I'm going to give you very simple things. Now, simple things are not easy to do. That something is simple does not mean it is easy. No. Simple means a, an eight-year-old can understand it. Easy means you have to be a woman or man of discipline to be able to do it. You have to tell yourself, enough is enough because this is my time. Do you believe this is your time? I want to see your comments in the chat room. Do you believe this is your time? Do you believe this is your time? I want to know somebody I'm talking to this morning. This meeting is for somebody. Somebody. Do you believe this is your time? This is my time to shine. It's my time. Do you believe this is your time? Now, I wanted to hear this. Listen to this. Listen to this. If you believe this is your time, if you believe that in the midst of this dwindling economy, abound openings for you, let me tell you this. The simple things you have to do are one, you need to level up. Somebody type level up. You need to level up. You need to level up. When I say level up, you'll be wondering, what, what, what do I mean? What do I mean? When I say level up, it means you need to grow up. You need to grow up. Many of us are grown, but still children. Many of us are mature, but we are not yet aware of where we need to improve on. You need to level up. You need to level up in what you pay attention to. That's number one. Number two, you need to level up in the voices that you listen to. Number three, you need to level up. You need to grow up in the attention you pay to working solutions. You are in this business. A weekend has passed. And you didn't show people your business. You didn't empower someone by showing them your business. You need to level up. You need to level up. This is no more time for wishy-washy. Uh -uh. This is no longer time for dilly-dallying. No. This is not a time to sit down and wait for things to happen. This is a time you stand for what you believe in. This is a time you create your own environment and stop waiting for the environment to propel. You know, after the meeting of yesterday, a, a young lady approached me, and I don't know her, but obviously in the business, I asked me a question. I actually had to think before I answered. I said, what do you do when all the people surrounding you are not moved by your type of energy? Something like, what do you do when everybody around you is 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 is, is um is complacent? They are not they are not they are not propelled by anything. They are not they're just they're just it's more like they've given up on life. It's more like they've settled for status quo. What do you do when you are around those people? How do you get your end? How do you drive yourself to the next level? 
And I'm going to tell you what I told her. You need to create your own environment. If you are someone who is so outer-directed, which means it is the opinion, the actions of people that decide what you're going to do, then there will be a problem with what you can achieve. The actions of people can decide how you respond to them. But what you do for yourself should be independent of the actions of people. Whether the people around you are motivated and ready to go. In your environment, you have created a system that pushes you to go and do what you want to do because tomorrow can never be less than today. You've created an environment that always puts you on your toes, that where you want to be is bigger than where you, you have been. You create an environment where you are your own competition. People are not your competition. Do you know the problem with making people your competition? It means you are moved when they move. They achieve great results. You feel you should quit them to it. Now, let me ask you, what happens when they feel they have reached their pinnacle? You feel, yes, because I have beaten this person, I am ultimate. No, you are living below your God-given potential. Because the pinnacle of that person might be your starting point. The pinnacle of that person might be your footstool. And you settle because you feel you have won. You beat a pauper and you call yourself a king. You beat a pauper and you call yourself a king. You are not a king, you are a pauper. Kings beat kings. Kingdoms beat kingdoms. The biggest king you can ever be is yourself your king of today. Tomorrow, pick your king of tomorrow. You will always have something to push you forward because the tomorrow of you, it will always be better than today of you. So when you create your own environment and you decide every day I get better at it, every day I help more people to succeed, every day I show more people the business, you are leveling up because you have a push that comes from within. It is inner directed. When I see people, they achieve a particular objective and they now slow down because there is nobody around them who is doing as much as them. Hi. I said, this person, see, Use what people have done ahead of you as a confirmation that you can do that and even more. Why more? Because you have an ingenuity within you that nobody else has. So level up. Level up. Somebody type level up. Please type it. Level up. I want you to see. I want to see that level up. Level up. Somebody type level up. You need to level up. You need to stop being in the midst of those people who all they do is complain, complain, complain. You need to level up. You need to stop being around those people who all they do is, ah, they are complaining about that one person that didn't show up. Rather than looking for more people, they will invite that will show up. You need to level up, my brother. You need to level up, my sister. Am I communicating? If I'm communicating, please type it the enter. I want to be sure. If I am communicating, if you are getting me, type it the enter. Type them. If I am communicating and you are getting the message, type it the enter. What's the next thing you need to do? The second thing. You need to look for the needy. Somebody type, look for the needy. You need to look for the needy. Yes. Look for the needy. You know, while I was preparing this, something crossed my mind. When you say the people will now start going to look for people, and my jury and all that, that's not what I mean here. <laughs> Listen to me. It's not what I mean here. Look for people who are tired of their situation and they're ready to do for something about it. Oh, oh, don't do Jesus. 
look for people who are fed up about their situation. They are ready to do something about it. A lot of people are fed up, but they are not ready to do something about it. They are fed up. Somebody will now ask me, but Gam, how do I know those who are ready to do something about it? Two ways. Way number one, majority of the people who are fed up and ready to do something about it are always talking about it. They are always saying it. You hear them say things like, man, this salary no do again, no. I was thinking things were bad, but now it's worse. What can I do? Try, try, try. If I can see something that can work while I'm still doing this job, if I can see some, they're already, already talking about it. Now, let me tell you this. You will not hear them saying it if you are complaining like them. You will hear them saying it, talking about their issues, when you make yourself a solution provider and you are listening rather than talking. You send somebody a happy new week message. My brother, happy new week. How was your weekend? My brother, the thought of going to this job again, seven days a week, eh? and then they'll just give me only 200,000. It tire me. I wish I can see something else that I can add to this. For the solution provider, he will be like, hey, okay, okay, um, you know, um, well, we can, I believe something will come up. And you reach out to this person the day after and say, the other day you were talking about if an opening will be there for you to do something more. Were you playing around? Were you just complaining? Or are you serious about looking for something? It is only the person who is listening, who is a solution provider that we see that opening. The other person will try to compliment. Let me tell you what majority of us are, do, are doing. We are trying to, to, to compete, to know whose complaint is more than the other person. Somebody didn't get that. We are trying to see who, who complains more than the other person. Who of us. Do you know how much transportation is in my area now? It used to be 500. Now it is 1.5. Oh, your yeah, own is even small. Come to our area now. Okada used to be 1.5. It's now 10,000. We are competing to know whose problem is bigger. Tell yourself, ah, how can you be competing with that kind of a thing? Because we are looking for pity. I'm not looking for pity. Looking for pity, you're a solution provider. Oh, somebody's not here. You're a solution provider, you're not looking for pity. You should be giving hope, not looking for pity. That's who you are. Am I talking to somebody now? The second way, listen to this the second way that you can find out whether that person is the person who is the needy and ready to do something about it. It's when you infuse negativity and watch their reaction. When you infuse negativity and watch their reaction. My brother, how was the weekend? It was amazing. I went to church. At least I have a renewed hope for the week. I'm ready to face the week. Amazing. I'm glad you feel like that. In fact, but let me even ask you, is there anything about your job right now that you wish would have been better? Is there anything about your weekend that you wish would have been more amazing, my brother? If I had opportunity in future to have more weekends, I would appreciate it. Huh? That's an entry point. It is only a mind who is a solution provider that we see that opening. The person who is a complainant will try to topple the, the, the complaints, the entry point, so that he will appear to be the one with the great first situation we come. Let me tell you, there are also people, listen to this, there are also people who in the midst of this situation are not ready to do anything. Let me tell you this, you cannot save everybody. You cannot save everybody. Some people need to need to get to the prime of their life for them to look for a solution. Just stay close. We focus on finding the needy. Focus on finding people who are ready to do something about their tomorrow. Focus on finding and they are out there. They can be the people you respect already. 
They can be the people that are on the same category as you. They can be people who you are better than. It cuts across board, but look for the needy. You have someone who is a benefactor, who people are rally around. Daddy, how are you doing? Quite a while. I just called to check up on you today. How is everything, sir? With this state of the economy, how is business moving, sir? My, my son, how can we do? We are pushing now. I said, Daddy, I'm with your kind of heart. Eh? You reach out to a lot, a lot of people are calling here and there for help. He said, my son, you know how it is now. It is even tougher these days, but what can we do? We have to continue helping that no matter how small we'll continue. That's an opening. He's a mighty, but if there is a way he can empower people so that they can empower others, he will be happy to hear. It is only a solution-oriented mind that we see that opening. A, a problem, a, a, a complainant will say, okay, daddy, I'll continue praying for you. Things will get better. Where God has given you opportunity to empower, to help that man who is already a benefactor to many other people to empower others. You say you are praying for him. Instead of telling him, Daddy, there is something I saw that makes a lot of sense to me. But what do I know? There is someone whose opinion means a lot to me. And I want you to take a look at it and give me your honest opinion. Maybe it could be a way that you could in your benevolent heart, empower other people. My son, what is it? Tell me more. Daddy, where can you give me 30 minutes? Let me come to your office and give you the full details. Let me bring one of my mentors to show you the full details. That's a solution-oriented mind, seeing an opportunity. Is somebody learning something this morning? Look for the needy. Look for the needy. There are out there. Let me tell you what this economy has done for Nigerians. More than ever, many people are beginning to sit up. More than ever, many people are beginning to look for solutions. Yes. Are there many people who are complaining? Yes, trust me. Many people. But some people, some people who have entrepreneurship mindset, solution-oriented mindset, are rising up to the occasion. So look for the needy. Now, the next thing that you have to do that I'm going to share with you today is this. As you create these solutions, as you empower people, guess what? You will be rewarded. Mm -hmm. If you solve a problem, you get rewarded. Wealthy people look for solutions to problems. When they create those solutions, they are rewarded. Pharmaceutical cures headache. They are rewarded by our money. When you solve problems, you are rewarded. Now, listen to this. When you help the needy, a lot of people to be able to have more than they currently have to better their own economy, you will be rewarded. You will have a lot of money you will make from this business. But this is the mistake. Many of us, because we are rewarded, many of us, because we have incomes that look like extra money. Many of us become very, very indisciplined with our money. So I'm here to tell you this morning, don't eat your seed. Don't do that. Do not do that. If you are not doing this business, you will have some money coming from your primary source of income. And for those who are doing this full time, you will be surviving on whatever you've been surviving with. Don't eat your seed. If you eat your seed, you won't have what to plant with in the next season. Hey, Gam, uh, is there a way you? Uh, I, 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 I want to. I want to do this, so, but I don't have money yet. Last week you encashed three hundred thousand. Last month you encashed five hundred thousand. Last two months you encashed one million. Where is the money now? Heaven. It is not a time to go and sew new clothes. You are not naked. Hmm. It is not a time to move to a new apartment, not yet. It is not a time to solve all the problems in your family. You know they finish. You're a solution provider, so problems will continue to come to you. That's part of your DNA. Many of us don't know this. If you're a solution provider, things will be coming to you to provide solutions for. Accept that as a reality. 
So the problems will never finish. Never. Don't eat your seed. I remember those days, you know, when I tell people stories about where I came from, my mom being a, a school teacher, uh, uh, my dad being a retired civil servant who became a security man. People pity me. Uh, they look at me with this kind of, hey, yeah. In my mind, I said, these guys don't know the kind of parents I had. The spirit of entrepreneurship in me today is from my parents. That's why every time I talk about them with great honor. My mom was a teacher, yet she was a farmer. She made more money in her farming than in her school teaching. More money. When the harvest is got, she has a poultry farm, she has a, 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 a crop farm. When the yams are harvested, listen to this. The best ones, they keep them for the next planting seasons. They will kill my part. He said, This one, when I when it is time to eat yam, these are the ones you must you will take from. On no account will you touch this one. Come see how far now. Why would we touch this one? In fact, at some point, she wouldn't even give you any explanation. As I grew older, the explanation was given to me by wisdom. If you eat the best today, what will you have tomorrow? You know, there is this post I saw. Somebody said, as you collect job today, nobody knows whether you will live to tomorrow. Fine. What if you live to tomorrow and you have eaten the best of today? There won't even be any tomorrow for you. But guess what? When the new planting season starts, there are plenty best to take from because she has prepared for it. She has set things in place for it. She and her, they've agreed. They and her husband have agreed. This is what they, they've agreed. <laughs> don't eat your seed. Just don't. Many of us do that. You encash 20,000. In fact, some of us, before the encoding is done, we've spent the money. If you know somebody like that, say I. Before the encashment is done, they've spent the money. They've spent it before the encashment. Stop eating your seed. If not, you won't be in the farm the next season. Stop eating your seed. As you receive that encashment, take out some percentage. Keep it away. You're not saving, you're not putting it aside for rainy days. You're putting it for a bigger you. A bigger you. How long will you pay rent in where you're staying? How long will it take you to for somebody to be paying rent to you? Somebody's not. If somebody in the spirit will understand what I just said. How long? And again, is it from hundred thousand encashment that I will be a landlord? It means you are not. You are, you are not. You are not. You are not. You, are, you don't have a vision. Yes, from that hundred thousand. Have you not realized that it's not about how much you make, but how much you can keep? Have you not realized that money goes to where it is used well? Have you not realized that? Have you not realized that? Many of us eat our seed. I see people trying to show up. I went into a barber salon yesterday, and over the weekend, and I saw, every, I looked at the hands of everybody. All of, in fact, about three guys sitting beside me, we are all carrying Samsung food. I was now sizing them up. It may be a wrong judgment, but I was sizing them up by their carriage, what other things they have around them. They, they, some of them didn't even have clipper, their own clipper. Listen to this. They are carrying Samsung fold, and they don't have their own hair clipper. They have to use the general clipper by the barber salon. Yet they are carrying, you see, misplaced priority, something that can kill you. You're not even paying attention to it, but you want to show off that you're carrying a fold. You gather all the money you would have used to do so. If you have grown to afford fold, somebody whose income is 10 million buys a fold, he's not even aware. Your income is 300,000 and you save and save and save and save. Gather all the 300, in fact, you give advance. Then you continue. 
what kind of insanity is that? What kind of madness? Let me call it for what it is because many of us don't know and we are doing it. Who are you trying to impress? The person you are trying to impress is also trying to impress you. And the cycle continues of people who don't know themselves. Don't eat your seed. If you don't start becoming better in this economy, let me tell you, don't expect things in the economy will get better. You have to start creating your own economy. Stop eating your seed. Uh, things are hard. Expenses are too much. Mm. Wait now. One year from today, you tell me whether the expenses will reduce or not. No. Oh. Your expenses last year and this year, which one is more? Please, somebody talk to me in the chat room. Your expenses of last year and this year, this point, this month, which one is more? The one of last year or the one of this year? Which one is more? This year. The expenses of this year is more. And let me tell you, the expenses of next year will be more. So is it not time to borrow sense and tell yourself, I've got to do something now. Now, not tomorrow. Now. Don't eat your seed. Uh, Gab, now I have to pay school fees. I need to pay school fees. They've increased it. Yes, I know you will pay school fees. Remove them from that school. Put them in a school you can afford. Yes, I said so. Remove them. Put them in a school you can afford. Yes. Put them in a school you can afford. You, the school you went to, the course you read, is that what you're practicing today? You borrowed to pay school fees of last term. Listen, you, know, you borrowed to pay school fees of last term. The loan is still running. A new term has started. What insanity? No, what insanity? You finish training. I want you to be a doctor so that doctors are making a lot of money. You spend all the money training the child in eight years, I'll be seven years university. No, not those money. The guy comes out and says, oh, that is network marketing I want to do. <laughs> no, you must be a doctor or I destroy you. Eh? And the guy has that is network marketing I want to do. I don't want to practice medicine. I don't want to practice medicine. No. I don't want to practice. I don't want to practice law. I don't want to practice engineering. I want to be a footballer. I want to be a musician. Stop eating your seed. Stop. Stop. And the next thing you need to do is to double up. Somebody type double up. Double up. You need to double up. You need to double up your, the person you bring to the game. You need to double up your work. You need to double up your invitation. You need to double up showing people the business. You need to double up. Double up. Double up. Your, the economy is doubling things up, tripling things up. You need to step 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 up. You need to double up. You need to double your hustle. You need to 10x your activities. You need to double up. Don't expect that what you did yesterday is enough for the glory of today. No, you need to double up. You need to double up. You have to double up. Stop expecting that when you invite 10, 10 will come. When you invite hey, before I used to invite 10 and 8 will come. And if the 8 come now, you do not need more than 8. Invite 20 so that 18 will come. Double up. Double up your hustle. Do we not hear these things? Double up your hustle. You need to double up. Double up, guys. Double up. We are tired of waiting for things to happen. We need to make things happen. Double up. See, I become a bit, I've become a little arrogant when I'm prospecting people. I talk to you and I say, guy, this economy, you know, they touch you. Hey, it's touching me. Now, what can I do? I am telling you what you can do. Yeah, you're doing smash me. When you're down the line, you will start regretting if you did it now. Are you ready to pay attention or not? Do you have another option or are you just wishing? You're just hoping on the government, Abby? You need to double up. You need to become more confident in the solution you have. Yes, you need to double up. You need to double up. 
you have 24 hours in a day. Let's say you sleep six hours. How many hours do you have? Many of us are living far away that if we commute two hours going, two hours coming, that's four hours gone plus six, that's eight. How many hours do you work? Many of us are working on things that cannot give us beyond 300,000 in a month. You see, you need to double up. I don't have time. I am a, my work takes this. I don't have time. I am a mom. I have my, yes, you need to double up for yourself and the children. You need to double up. You need to double up. You just have to double up. Start looking for how to bring your business to as many people as possible. Double up. This is not a time to become uh, emotional. Hey, that person rejected me. That person didn't see it. I beg, move. Next. 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 Because they are the needy. Those who need what you're offering them. Double up. It's when you double up that you see them. How many presentations do you run in a day? Double up. How many invitation calls do you make in a day? Double up. Today is 14th. In 16 days, by the grace of God, the project we are running for the month will have finished. What have you done? Double up. Double up. Double up. This is not a time to, to, to look for who to blame. Double up. Double up. Double up. This is not a time I get them before no be property. Double up. I used to have this. Double up. I used to buy this with 10,000. Double up. Well, you used to, one of uh, 20,000 used to fill my tank. Now it is 80,000. Double up. You need to double up, guys. You need to double up. Double up your effort. You have a beautiful business in your hands that when you double up your effort, it triples your income. It quadruples your income. But you need to double up. You need to double up. And listen to this. Be okay in this season to be alone. If you want to follow the crowd, you will achieve what the crowd has. Be willing, a vast majority of people around us are all around looking for that uh, economic messiah that will come and change things. That's why a lot of scam, scam preachers are looting Nigerians like never before. A lot of people today have used religion as a way to loot gullible Nigerians. Sow a seed, don't walk. Hi, Jesus. Sow a seed and it will happen. Somebody who has been praying and applying so many places, all of a sudden attends such occasion and then gets a job and he comes to give testimony that he didn't do anything, no. he just attended this session and God did it and 1,000 more people will come. Are you, are you even paying attention to the scenario? The person who is championing such fellowship is preparing what to tell you, preparing his business. You are not preparing your business. Rather, you carry your own. Hey, is it not 10,000? I can give 10,000. You carry your seed that you used to pray. You can't throw it there. And then what happens? You expect the person will be flying private jet putting their children in the best school they can afford, living the best life, and you yourself, you can't even afford the schools they own. What is wrong with us? Am I asking, saying that we should not sow into the house of God? No, I'm not saying that. But also use your sense. Also use your head. There are more churches in Nigeria than businesses. What? More churches than business. Of course, they are businesses. Yes, they are businesses. They are registered as businesses. Need to go opposite. I'm not asking you be prayerful. Give God His rightful place, but don't think that God will do for you what He has given you the ability to do for yourself. If He has to do that, why has He created you and me in His own image after His own likeness? We are gods. Need to move opposite of the crowd. You need to move opposite of the crowd. People are relaxing on Sunday, complaining and complaining. They've come back from church. They've eaten rice from the little money they have. They will now sit down, complain and complain till 8 p.m. They will fall into coma. 
to go back to the job that doesn't pay them enough. What of you? Will you follow them? No. You come back from that church, you eat that rice, and you go to the streets. You go and show somebody your business. You go and empower somebody. That's what it means to walk against the crowd. It may be lonely. Let me tell you this. When you make that decision, you will lose some friends. Some people will think you're on too much. They will leave you. But it's okay. Because where you're going to, you will meet a new set of people who think like you think. Who are going to higher places than you even imagined. That will be a fuel and confirmation that you are in the right place. Let me tell you this. It's better to walk alone than with a crowd that is going in the wrong direction. It is better. While you're waiting for the applause from the crowd, applaud yourself because you're in the right direction. You are doing what a lot of people are not ready to do. You are the one who is creating a solution while others are complaining. You are doing something. You are working on something. You are making something happen. And the last but not the least, commit your ways into the hands of God. Also trust that he will bless your efforts and he shall bring everything to pass. Commit all your works into the hands of God and he will establish your plans. Don't think that hearing this thing today will make them sink into your heart and put you to action constantly. They can give you a start, but I tell you, put God in his rightful place. His spirit will guide you, sustain you in the midst of every storm. You will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But because God is with you, you won't even be aware. Because I tell you, you are breaking away from the cycle that the economy has created. And you're creating your own economy to be beyond it. It's a battle. It's a fight. Be ready for that fight. And tell God it is your fight. Because when you succeed, you are going to help a lot of his children succeed. My wish for you above all things is that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. That's the wish of God. So imagine helping people to succeed. You are helping God foster that. So I want you to create your own environment. I want you to overcome the Nigerian reality. Create your own world. Create your own economy. You are aware of what is happening in the economy. You are ready to create yours that will be over it. Let me tell you this. This business is a lasting hope in a dwindling economy like ours. Let us become better Nigerians so that we can affect the Nigerian nation. Don't let each day pass without you empowering someone with our business. Don't let and each day, don't make that mistake. Don't let it pass. And I can't wait to celebrate you while you are making your world a better place. Your world. I'm not talking about the world. Make your world a better place. Let the next person around you make their world a better place. Before you know it, there are many better places around. And what happens? The world in its entirety will be a better place. So, that's my message for you this morning. I know some of us are challenged. Some of us are annoyed. Some of us are angry. Some of us, maybe even with me. But I want to tell you, 
whatever is going on in your mind right now, whatever emotion you feel is necessary. It's necessary to get you to the next level. You need to, this is, the, this is my time to shine. This is your time to shine. I want you to shine. If you want to shine, you can live like them. <laughs> you cannot. If you, if you want to shine, you cannot live like them. <laughs> you have to be better. We have to be better. And it is our time to be better. It is our time to be better. It is this time, not tomorrow. <laughs> it is this time. Let me tell you what I desire, God helping us, that by the end of this month, somebody will say, you know what, Gam, when I was listening to you that day, I was really pissed. I thought I grim my spirit. And I told myself, it starts free this October. And by the end of October, this is the result I have created. And these are the things I'm ready to do better in the month of November. I want to hear things like this from as many of you as possible, from all of you, from all of you. I celebrate you all because I know that someone has been empowered today. I know that someone has been empowered today. Have you been empowered? Have you been empowered today? Talk to me. Have you been empowered today? Have you been empowered today? Have you been empowered today? Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is almost 930. You know, when these things flow from the heart, you will lose touch of time. Yeah? But I believe, I am certain that the time has been well spent with you. It's Super Monday. It's the day we start the week. We start it in high spirits so that we make the week count. Does anybody have anything to share? Any part that struck you personally, like bum, 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 bum. or any question before we call it a morning and we go into the street and rock it? Does anybody have anything to say? Feel free. You can wave your hand to the screen. I give you a room. You, anything, just let us know. Does anybody have anything to share? Does anyone? Does anyone have anything to say? The message is it too hot that nobody could explain it. Please, somebody should say something. Yeah. Even if it's one person. One person should say something. Was it too bad? Bas 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 yeah. You know, let me tell you the person that benefits more from this session is me. The thoughts from this are thoughts that are fully formed when I am presenting it. Somebody doesn't get it. The thoughts I shared with you are fully formed when I am presenting it. So for me, the full message actually happened while, to me while I'm presenting it. That's when it happened. So I benefited the most, more than all of you, really. I thought about it, God's direction, and while I presented, it became fully formed. So I benefited, I know. Yes, I but you want to say something? Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Dan. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, this training just reminded me of the two thoughts I slept with my mind. I thought of um, double up and... Um, Double up, and also things are no longer getting funny. You know, last night I was having a discussion with my dad, you know, and he said for him to fill his tank, um, NMPC provider, he even had to go to NMP, um, NMPC filling station, that it was at the thousand thirty naira or something, that when it reached 87,000 or like 90,000, he told the foil attendant, stop. Yeah. That he'll continue and the tank never, the never full. Then also, he said for him to drive his vehicle to and fro from Abuja back to from Abuja to Enugu and back, that he'll spend nothing less than two fifty thousand. No, I couldn't. I couldn't bear it anymore. I was like, 
that two fifty thousand is somebody's salary out there. That people cannot literally travel again. Even if this business that you're doing, how well have you even pushed yourself so hard that you know you have sustained an income that is giving you so much? So you know, I slept on thoughts and started seeing reasons not just really to double up, but things are not even funny generally. Then talk more of in the um business. Then also, I showed a VIP lady my business yesterday. I was just excited. I was just very happy. Irrespective, she said later on we'll discuss. But I found out that those masquerades you fear, you know, because you feel that they are high quality, blah, 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 blah. Just as you said, let's look for the needy containing our business. But it gives us that benefit of doubt that there are some persons who we just still need to show them the business, irrespective of maybe the limiting beliefs or like the mind that we're having now in our brains, that maybe this thing might not be for this person. But not knowing that some persons are even the doorways to, you know, the destination you're going for. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, you know, this business is heavenly. I'm going to close with this before we say our permission. Imagine that in 30 days, you succeed at getting two people to do megaverse. On direct connectors bonus already, how much do you have? For that month. That all you succeed at doing in an entire month is you connect two people, just two, who do megaverse. How much do you have on direct connectors bonus? I mean megaverse. Megaverse. That's 100,000 for one, right? Times two, that's 200,000. With the matching bonus of seven. Do we get how heavenly this business is? Well, do we get it? That's almost 200 and, almost 250,000. Almost 250,000. There is a part of this training that I didn't include, which I'm going to close with. In this month, in the remaining part of this month, be intentional. Be intentional. Be intentional about your activities. Be intentional about what you want to achieve. Be intentional about who you want to become at the end of. Be intentional. Be intentional. Be intentional. Thank you very much for being here today. I'm glad to have you. I believe you are also glad to have me. And someone help us post our permission and then we say our closing prayers.